Madhumita. Good afternoon, everyone. I take immense pleasure to invite Dr. Ranjit Singh, currently professor in the Department of Management Studies, Indian Institute of Information Technology, Prayagraj. Dr. Ranjit, a veteran in industry since 2003, is an alumnus of the Dibruga University as well as IIM Ahmedabad. A specialist in accounting, finance, and entrepreneurship, Dr. Ranjit's research domain extends to behavioral finance, Islamic finance, and other related areas. Having published nearly 115 research papers relating to above mentioned specialization in regional and interna international journals such as Scopus and ABDC Index, Dr. Ranjit, in addition, also presented papers in reputed conferences. Dr. Ranjit authored 15 books, to mention a few, Business Environment, Financial Statement Analysis, Indian Financial System, Behavioral Finance, Mutual Fund Investment, Great Financial Crisis of the World, and a fictional novel, Presiding Babu, which turned out to be his bestseller. In addition to triumphantly completing four sponsored projects, Dr. Ranjit is a member of editorial and review board of multiple reputed journals in the field of commerce and management. Seven research scholars have completed their doctoral programs under his guidance and four are on the anvil. His competitions have been his passion. As such, he developed a wide range of innovative touch teaching modules based on quizzes. I now request Dr. Ranjit Singh to share his erudition with us. The stage is yours, sir. Thank you uh, uh, for giving me an opportunity. So first of all, uh, uh, let me thank the faculty members, especially Dr. Sri Janani for uh, inviting me to share the stage with uh, this August gathering, such learned people, my dear students and uh, my dear respected uh, faculty friends. Some of my friends are also in among the audience. So, very good afternoon to each one of you. And after listening to the deliberations by Madam Sudha and Mr. Chandan Taparia, now I think there is very less to speak about because they have al almost they have uh, uh, shown you the ocean. The entire ocean is being shown to the students and now it is very difficult for the third speaker and the fourth speaker to speak upon because almost uh, because they have not left out anything so anyway so i will try to just uh, uh, show something which has been left out by those speakers so let me share the slides first is the slide visible Is it visible? Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. It is visible. So the topic that uh, impact of COVID-19 on capital market, and we are actually discussing on this. So our previous speakers have already given a very fantastic explanation of impact of COVID-19 on capital market, and I think they have not left any area. Uh, which has to be covered, but still I will, as I, as I stated, I will try to cover some of the areas which has not been, had been covered. So before that, let me show you this black swan. How many of you have seen this black swan? Normally the idea is the swan happens to be the white and white, this, the color is attached to the, this particular species and it symbolizes something peace, something good something prosperity but this black swan is normally not happening and is very rare thing rarest of the rare incident and this covid 19 incident or the great financial crisis or the world war ii or world war one and uh, maybe the great depression these are some of the incidents which has happened in the history they are categorized as the black swan event so what exactly is the black swan so they are having very severe repercussions. So this black swan event, whatever it is happening, whether it is the Great Depression of 1929 or the Second World War or after that the, uh, the market crash of 1987, which is the Black Monday, as our previous speaker have spoken, or the great financial crisis of the world that was uh, 
2008 and finally this uh, uh, 2020 this corona covid 19 crisis so these are having very serious repercussions and these events cannot be predicted well in advance though we had so many theories our economists have predicted or developed so many models our finance experts have uh, developed so many model financial modeling is available our very sophisticated calculations are there supercomputers are there but nobody could, could predict all these incidents nobody could predict the financial crisis of 2008 nobody could predict that in 2020 the entire world will be in, in the lockdown situation nobody could predict about the uh, happenings in the world war or the great depression of 1929 so these events cannot be predicted well in advance though once it happens people start talking that yes i knew it this will happen i knew it this will happen and in behavioral finance this particular bias is called hindsight bias that's i knew it but before it happens nobody knew nobody will talk about that okay this particular thing is going to happen but once it happens everybody will say that okay i knew it or this has happened because of these and these reasons but if you are so uh, smart and so intelligent then all these events should have been predicted at least well in advance this did not happen in the past and it will not happen in future also this because this is the uh, nature this is the category of this black swan event and these events are considered as catastrophic events that have a high level of impact on the global economy already explained by our previous speakers or is known to the audience also that these events are considered as catastrophic events and all the science logic astrology get fail in predicting such events and all the strategic planners and thinkers do plan or predict the occurrence of such events but they could not and that's why this is the black swan event this is the definition of black swan event and COVID-19 by definition it falls within the category of this black swan event okay now these are some of the instances of black swan event that 87 stock market crisis 2008 financial crisis Lehman Brothers collapse in the year 2008 and September 11 attack and finally 2020 coronavirus all these events are considered as the black swan event okay but this finally is when this coronavirus event came and uh, I think perhaps we are first one in the entire human history to face this situation that entire world is in the lockdown situation. Entire world whether it is USA or UK or India or China or Japan, Germany or Africa or Australia entire world was in a lockdown situation and perhaps in the human history of human civilization it had happened for the first time that entire world was in a lockdown situation and some of the problems that we were talking that uh, this ozone layer is depleting and ozone layer is gone beyond control the pollution has gone beyond control and there cannot be any solution to the uh, pollution and all of a sudden people have started seeing the stars and the blue moons and uh, the AQI index, air quality index have started uh, becoming showing, uh, becoming greener and greener. This has happened for the first time. Entire world market, markets all over the world was falling. It's not that only Indian market was falling or US market was falling. Entire world market was falling. It means that this black swan event, it is not only restricted to India and it is for the entire world and that's why actually this is called pandemic there are two two terms used pandemic and epidemic epidemic when actually such certain diseases are restricted only within a domestic territory of a country then it becomes epidemic and when it is in many countries or many continents then it becomes pandemic and if this pandemic has affected the stock markets the markets all over the world it was falling this was the situation in march april 2020 but the question is did it happen in past yes it happened in past and what has happened in the past as my previous speaker mr taparia have said that it has happened in the past also and this the dips are temporary but the growth is permanent let us see what actually had happened in the past in 1992 sensex down by 54 percent in a year just after unearthing the case by of harsad mehta and 
up by 127 percent in the next one and a half years. Then in 1996, Ketan Parikh scam was unearthed and 40 percent down in four years and 150 percent in the next year. Then in 2000, actually it is in 2000 and 2000, 2002, 56 percent down in 1.5 years and 135 percent up in 2.5 years. Then in 2008, the market came down to the level of 7,500. I'm talking about Sensex. Sensex came to the level of 7,561% 7, down from the lifetime high of 19,000 and 20,000. It came down to 7, uh, 7 and 8,000 level in one year. And then after that, 157% up in 1.5 years. Then in the two year 2010, again, it was down by 28% in one year and 96% up in the next three years and meaning thereby that every correction is an opportunity to invest and not to be scared and I totally agree with uh, Mr. Taparia that corrections are temporary the dips are temporary and but the growth is permanent so for the young investors who are sitting in this auditorium my student friends this is a lesson for you that as already explained by Mr. Taparia that corrections are very temporary, dips are temporary, but all you need to identify and if you want to increase your income, if you want to live some a very comfortable life, you need to invest and for that you need to identify some investment avenues. It may be stock, it may be something else also, maybe mutual fund, maybe some other as per your risk appetite, but you have to take some certain risks and you have to invest in certain stocks you have to write identify right kind of stocks that will be giving you some uh, uh, growth maybe in the in the long run and that will help you in living leading a very comfortable life and for my students friends the good point and the positive point with you is that you have the age you are just a, like a nine o'clock sun and you have entire day living uh, left with you and if you start investing early in your life maybe like most of the population sitting in the auditorium will be within the age bracket of 18 years to maybe 22 23 years so you have ample of life ample of time living with you is, is, uh, with you and you if you start investing right now most are the early will start most comfortable will be in the later years that is the mantra number one then some visible impacts of COVID-19. Already my previous speakers have spoken about it, so I'm not going into detail, much detail, but only thing is that increased digital activities. We have seen a lot of digital activity, a lot of digitalization. Everything is becoming digital. Our cinema, movies, food delivery, our supply chain, banking, insurance, Payment, everything is becoming digital. It's because of this COVID-19 crisis. And our mobile phone became the most uh, important instrument, most important equipment in the entire house, entire office. The mobile phone happens to be the most important equipment. And uh, everything is becoming digital. This has, this is the most visible impact. So this have an impact on digitalization and everything has got digitalized. We have digital banking. Instead of having manual banking or visiting the bank branches manually, we started to having digital banking using our mobile phone or computers. We have digital insurance, need not to visit the bank insurance premises, insurance companies, digital insurance is policybazaar.com or some other like such kind of websites are very popular. Even like Paytm is now in selling insurance policy. Phone pay is now selling insurance policy. Everything has got digitalized. Digital supply chain, delivery, digital stores, Amazon or Flipkart or Mintra, digital food delivery, Jometo or Swiggy, everything has got digitalized. This was and this is the reality. Though we have uh, all this digital banking or digital insurance or digital uh, food delivery, we have adopted out of compulsion because there was a lockdown, there was a pandemic outside our home. But as stated by our previous speakers, this is going to be the reality. Though we are meeting virtually, but my dear friends, in the coming days, this virtuality will be the new reality. 
the virtuality will be the new normal because of many convenience before this lockdown people were not knowing that we can communicate we can interact with each other without physically moving or without physically being present at your place but this lockdown have taught us that this is possible and that's why i sitting in allahabad mr tapadia sitting in his other place madam sindhu is sitting in her home and you sitting in uh, vjim auditorium and we all sitting at different different places are interacting with each other and this is reminding me of uh, one very, very one very famous uh, uh, character of our hanuman ji that hanuman ji had got the curse that he do not know he did not know that he has so much of the power and he will be doing that he, uh, and, and re, until and unless someone reminds him that yes you have the power to cross this ocean cross this sea and once jamwant ji have uh, have uh, told him that yes hanuman you can do it then after that only he has climbed from one part of the one bank of the river or sea to the another to the sri lanka and he 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 was able to uh, just go there until so actually we all are having that uh, suffering from this hanuman effect and we need someone else someone uh, some jamwan to remind us that yes we are capable of doing it before corona virus before covid 19 lockdown we actually we are least interested we least bothered that we could interact we can avail all those services without going to the market or without physically moving or without physically being present there but thanks to the covid 19 that we ultimately we are able to know ourselves that okay all these things can be done without physically moving and just sitting at home our movies are also becoming digital we need not to visit cinema hall just to watch a movie just sitting in your in front of your computer the smart TV, televisions are there you can watch movies through this amazon prime or netflix or this hotstar so many platforms are this ott platforms are there and that is also becoming digital so companies who were able to adapt to the changes were the survivors and finally winners and those companies who were not able to adapt to the changes they could not remain in the game and this reminds me of a very famous saying of charles darwin that it is not the most intellectuals of the species that survives it is not the strongest that survives but the species that is able best to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself they actually survives so the same the charles darwin who have spoken these things several years back for the species that the evolution of human species now the same thing is also becoming true to the businesses also that it's not the most strongest companies it's not the most uh, uh, tech savvy companies or the most uh, uh, financially strong companies or the old companies or the very well managed companies they are able to survive but the survi- that survivors in this lockdown or in this crisis situation are those companies which were able to adapt to the changes smartly and these companies they are the survivors so all those companies that has been explained by the previous speakers if you just see all these or these are the, all the companies who have adapted to the changes okay now another thing another uh, interesting of my observation is that with the entire country or in their entire world was in a lockdown situation and this has led to the shut down of many small farms they could not sustain this pressure and they had to shut down and now the question is what is the effect of that this lockdown is there many small farms were there in the market some of the small farms they have they had just started some of the startups were there who had just started but they could not sustain the pressure and they had to shut down because because of the lockdown their revenues were not coming and ultimately they had to shut down and the result is that there for those farms which were the survivors who survived this competition for them the competition was very less and as a result they were able to charge more prices and as a result their revenue also started increasing for example just take the example of britannia britannia is manufacturing biscuits but britannia is not the only company which is manufacturing biscuits 
there were a lot of local players, players also. And these local players, they are eating a significant part of the market of Britannia. Asian paints, they are, uh, Asian paint, Louis Worker, there are some other big brands are there. But there are some local players in every every place, every district, every uh, state, there are some local players. In your Telangana or uh, in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, there are many local players who were manufacturing biscuits or they are manufacturing these paints and their paints are also getting sold into the market and they since their paints are also ge getting sold into the market they are also eating a significant part of the uh, market share but because of this covid 19 crisis most of this inefficient market players they got shut down and re mean resulting result was that the competition which is coming out of those local players and small players and particularly inefficient players though they were inefficient but they are uh, they are uh, sufficient to create nuisance for some of the big players in the market so their competition which is coming from them they just came down and as a result this uh, for the remaining players they are able to charge they are able to get uh, not only more price but revenue also this was and that's why you will find like, most of the time many time people ask me why like our gdp data and uh, the stock market data are going in a two different directions first thing is that gdp is different and stock market is different though they are related the stock market is said to be the barometer of the economy this has been taught to us since our childhood days but this time the stock market is not becoming showing the uh, or not uh, just being reflected as the barometer of the economy and the result is that a stock uh, the reason is that a stock market uh, it is reflecting the performance of the companies and the companies which are actually listed in the stock market their business is getting better they are getting more business they are getting more market share because the elimination of some inefficient players unorganized players so they are getting better market share this is first thing and when why there is a huge flow of funds in the stock market already my previous speaker have spoken about that that uh, people have lost jobs and uh, they started working from home and some of them have that expertise of working in the stock market or investing in the stock market and get ample time due to the lockdown and since they are getting ample time due to the lockdown they have started uh, investing in the stock market because no other revenue to invest but the stock market they could find because even though there was a lockdown stock market was not closed even for a day maybe for one day or two day when this janta curfew was imposed that the stock market was closed but other than that the stock market was not closed so those people who have lost their job and they are sitting or they are just working from home and they have got ample time to sit or invest or they scan the companies and now they have started investing and this is the reason that cdsl or nsdl they are saying that or they are stating that during this last one and a half years they are getting multiple number of new account opening applications and this this is one reason is that and most of those applications most of the new accounts are actually very active they are not just a dormant account and this performance of the companies which are listed companies then followed by new accounts new demet accounts and new demet account is also bringing new money new investment in the market all these things are leading the stock market to grow towards uh, to achieve the new heights every day then another benefit is the organized sector in the lockdown especially this unorganized sector this was totally thrust and for the unorganized sector uh, they are actually performing as you have seen that all those companies which are organized they have the, uh, 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 they, uh, they have uh, adopted all those activities to go digital and the most transactions were recorded transactions and uh, most collection of taxes started every month government used to declare uh, this GST collection data and you will find that last month it was 1,50,000 crore uh, collection of GST which is the lifetime high 
Similarly, one lakh fifty thousand, one lakh forty thousand, one lakh. And if you just see the data of GST collection just before the lockdown, maybe March 2020 or February 2020, it was not even one lakh crore. It was ninety thousand to ninety-five thousand crore. This was the range of collection of GST. But once this lockdown was imposed, and as I told you that this unorganized sector or this inefficient sectors, they were eliminated from the economy. Now only sector which is left. in the economy was the organized sector and this organized sector also have to do most of the transactions using this digital mode of technology so that most of the transactions will be recorded and the rec digital transactions and recorded transactions will lead to the more collection of taxes and competition from small and local firms have already been eliminated and this has led to the bigger market share and the question is not all sectors are falling my previous speaker have already explained fantastically that what which of the sectors are actually not falling or which of the sectors are falling so some of the sectors he has given a more detailed list i have just given a, a list which is just indicative automobiles or it or fmcg companies they are actually not falling they are gaining because everybody is trying to maintain social distancing and because of this social distancing norms which is adopted by or this trying to be popularized by the government nobody would like to use public transport and that's why everybody is like to have would like to have at least one small automobile so that they can travel using that automobile and th that at that mode and that avoid public transport and they can maintain social distancing and that's why you'll find during this covid crisis the stocks of some of the companies like tata motors or hero honda or uh, mahindra and mahindra they have performed initially there was a dip but ultimately they have performed better than the other stocks it company stocks because everything is becoming digital so it company stocks are obviously it was obvious for them that they will perform better fmcg nobody stopped eating even you are working from home or whether you are working from office you will eat you will have you will have to eat something so fmcg stocks were not uh, doing bad then pharmaceutical stocks were doing good so all sectors are not falling so what is the lesson number next that you need to identify some of the sectors and you need to diversify your portfolio that okay these sectors are doing good in this situation but in if the situation gets changed then some other sectors will be doing good so for that you need to do some analysis and you need to diversify your portfolio and what where uh, which mistake most investors do just you see this graph that here at the peak this person is filled with full with the greed and he is trying to buy the stocks and when this market is falling this person is trying to sell because of this fear so when the markets are at the high uh, at the higher level relatively higher level people or the investors they are just uh, full with the greed and because of the greed they are just trying to buy and when this markets are started falling down they are fearful and out of fear they start selling but what is the mantra the mantra is given by uh, none other than this warren buffet Uh, and it is the be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful why because when these markets are at the lifetime high or at a, at their high, higher level then there is every probability that a stock whatever stock you will be choosing they will be um, at a very higher prices and you will be rewarded not for buying high you will be rewarded for buying cheap and selling high but here if you are buying high and selling at the lower level then actually reverse you are doing that you are buying at a higher price and selling out of fear at a lower price and ultimately you are making a loss so when others are greedy when the market is full with the greed then it is a time to become fearful and if you if someone someone sells at this point then this is uh, uh, that person can make significant profit and here when the mid most of the market players are fearful then this is the time that they can buy they, this is the time to really become greedy and make investment in the, in the stocks because this is the time that you will be getting whatever the stocks will be choosing the good best of the best company stock at a uh, very relatively very lesser prices i'm just giving one example you just see uh, the prices of mahindra and mahindra today it is 900 plus but 
in March 2020 and after a few months, April 2020, even May 2020, the same stocks were was available at 200, 250 rupees within that range. Okay, so if someone would have bought that stock at 200 level because the entire market was fearful, so if someone was greedy at that time, he or she would have got the opportunity to buy the same stocks at 200 rupees, and now the same stock is now being sold at 900 plus 950 rupees approximately within one year how much time 200 to 900 almost uh, uh, four times 25 percent to 30 percent growth so this is the mantra lesson number next my young investors you should always remember and not only remember once you are entering into the market you should try to practice also this now this is a uh, situation, this is a uh, photograph many of us have seen in our houses or in the temples or uh, maybe in the television shows that what this Lord Krishna is doing. So he is actually washing the legs of his friend Sudama. And those, uh, like if you just ask your parents or your grandparents and those who are the, the faculty members, they will appreciate that they also might have seen in their villages that when someone is coming from outside this was the normal practice to greet a guest is by just washing their legs or like washing their give either by some of their family members or offering them water to wash their legs and uh, or just to sanitize them and actually this was a kind of sanitization which our government the WHA is talking about sanitization all the time so this sanitization was practiced it's not a new concept it was practiced uh, in our earlier sanatan period and the social distancing was also is it is also being uh, uh, propagated but social distancing was also very much inherent in our culture so this sanitization and social distancing it means that now again we are talking about this it means that Sanatan practices are back. And when Sanatan practices are back, it means that can we can just give a wild thought. Some of the uh, professionals from the stock market are also present here that can we have a Sanatan index? Like if we have carbon index, if we have a green index, if we have ESG index or SRI index, socially responsible index, can we have Sanatan index? Like for example, uh, we have this uh, ESG index like the companies which are performing good on environmental society and the governance criteria certain criteria are fixed those companies are actually put in that ESG index or carbon index those companies which are actually complying to the Sharia principles they are actually put in the Sharia index similarly can we identify some of the activities some of the policies some of the practices uh, Sanatan practices and the companies which are actually following all those Sanatan practices they will be put in the uh, they will be put uh, in that Sanatan index or maybe some Vedic index name can be anything and this will be a kind of help to the investors so that they can identify okay these are these are the companies which are actually uh, following this uh, all the sanitization and social distancing norms so by investing in this kind of companies actually i am trying to help the society and i am also trying to motivate that company to uh, other companies to maintain all these covid 19 related protocols this is the picture uh, we have seen in most of the households during this lockdown a lot of memes were also shared that uh, the husband is also this doing jhadu pocha and he is also cooking for his wife actually this is not bad why only wife should cook husband should also cook both of them have the equal responsibility of running a family so both of them should work together but very few people understand so because this the husband and wife both of them should uh, share their responsibility it's not that only wife will be working in office and she will be working in kitchen also it's a joint responsibility of husband and wife so can we have a gender equality index in the stock market the companies which are actually giving equal opportunity to all the genders without not doing any kind of discrimination uh, gender equality practice gender sensitization sensitivity practices are actually being practiced in some of the companies and we can have a very rigorous audit for those companies and the companies which are doing that 
can be put into the gender equality index or this will also be a kind of motivation to the companies to become more gender friendly. So these are a few of the suggestions, wild thoughts. I do not know to what extent this will be fruitful or not. Just, but we and academicians have that liberty to give some wild thought. Later on, those practitioners like uh, Mr. Uh, Tirania and others, Mr. Das, Chandan, Mr. Chandan, 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 Mr. Chandan, Mr. Chandan, 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 Chandan. Uh, they will have the responsibility Chandan. of implementing our ideas. So we as academicians have that liberty to throw some wild thoughts. So we, I am just doing that. Another thing is that uh, what I could see this uh, about this uh, the future of our Indian market or uh, this Indian corporate market we have seen a reverse migration and one estimate is there that uh, approximately 4 crore people from UP, Bihar and Jharkhand, Odisha and West Bengal they came back from dif different uh, uh, locations like Mumbai, Hyderabad, uh, then uh, Delhi Gurgaon and they came back to their original villages that is which is located in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, then Jharkhand, Odisha and West Bengal. Approximately 4 crore it's a big number. And remember when these people they have left their villages they left without having any skill and they left without having any capital. But when they are coming back they may be coming with capital, they may not be coming, coming back with capital, but certainly they are coming back with certain skill. So when they have migrated from their village, they are actually unskilled laborers. But when they are coming back, they are skilled labor. They have acquired some skill by working in some of the industries. And if 1%, even 1% of this 4 crore, that is uh, around 4 lakh it is happening. If 1 crore stays back in the village and they thought to start something of their own then that 4 lakh is a big number 4 lakh this if just one percent is very small but one percent of four crore or a, 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 a rough estimate was a four to five crore population they migrated so that's a big number and so laborers are coming back with either capital or they will be coming back with some skill and even a small proportion of them stage in the village, that, that is a huge opportunity for the rural entrepreneurship and the rural employment. And the companies which will be addressing to the issues, these issues, rural entrepreneurship and rural employment or something rural marketing, this is actually a totally gray area for the companies to address. And any startups, any companies can give a thought to address to the concerns of this particular uh, group of people and finally this is the line that I always uh, admire and this is the line which I always used to re recite and this is the base of any problem actually we are finding that yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijam meham paritranaya sadhuna vinasaya chaduskritam dharma sansthapana thariya sambhavami yuge yuge so this kind of corrections, this is not happening only first time in the history. This had happened in the past also. And when something will go grown up exponentially or exceptionally uh, out of the way, then something will come maybe in the form of Corona, maybe in the form of some other things to not only correct the person, but also to correct the market or the situation or the environment. And this will keep on happening. So the Lord Krishna or the Bhagavan or the Iswar, they will be coming in a different different forms. Maybe he will be coming in form of some certain situation, maybe in form of some person, maybe in form of some incidents or some events. The, the situations will keep on coming and we will be seeing this kind of situation. We have to see the positivity in it that the market have gone up exceptionally very high maybe without any having any fundamental value and this kind of crisis is actually trying to bring back market to its intrinsic value. So this kind of things will happen. Actually it had happened in the past, it is happening and in the future also it will happening. So it is not actually wise to just unnecessarily model the market but what we have to do is that we have to simply focus on our work, keep choosing some good stocks, some uh, 
some stocks actually which are very uh, good and core to our principles and just we have to keep on doing that this will keep on happening and karmanyavadikaraste maafalistu kadachana that's all from my side thank you